Good morning, good morning, family. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen, amen. How many are ready to worship God today? I am Pastor Rene Angeles, a Spanish ministry, and I'm glad that you stay here. I don't know why, but the Sundays, you look beautiful. I believe it's God. <laughs> uh, I'm really enjoy when you're here because today is a special day. Today is a very special day because we celebrate 25 years the mercy of God. Thank you, God, because everything is for you. Thank you for the life of the pastor and sister Shields because it's powerful in the life of the church and not only the church, the community. So thank you very much for you here. Please stand up and let's pray with God. Heavenly Father, thank you for another beautiful day. Thank you for your love for us. And a special thank you, God, because you build the progressive community church because one man heard your voice Amen. and obeyed your call. Thank you for the life of the pastor and sister Shields. Thank you because it's amazing. You love and you church. And you send the pastor Shields because you love us. Yeah. And now we want to exalt you. Only have you deserve. Everything is for you, God. Please receive all the honor, all the glory. Yes. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Please, please, please stand up and we receive and the pastor and sister Shields. Good morning. We will now open with a welcome from Brother Amador Martinez Jr. First, I want to thank, first, I want to thank the Lord for today. I want to welcome you today. We are celebrating 25 years of Pastor Shields and Mrs. Shields here at Progressive Community Church. Thank you, Pastor and Mrs. Shields, for serving the Lord. And one last thing. <laughs> Pastor may have good taste in churches, but not in football. <laughs> Amador, you were wrong. <laughs> we are thankful <clears throat> to be here, and we would like to welcome Sister Monique Duncan. She is a praise dancer from Del Paso Union Baptist Church in Sacramento, California. Pastor saw her do this praise dance, and he was so moved that he wanted her to share with him, his wife, and with all of you. Sister Monique Duncan. Come 
come tonight for flesh to get any glory, but we came tonight from you, God, to magnify the name of our Father. So, Father, tonight we don't extend to you our hand, but we extend to you our lives to come now. Father, this is the generation of them that will seek your face. And, Father, we didn't come tonight for flesh to get any glory, but we came tonight from you, God to magnify the name of our Father. So Father, tonight we don't extend to you our hand, but we extend to you our lives to come now and purify our hearts. And in an atmosphere like this, let a revival of holiness take place tonight, God. We need a fresh fire tonight, God. Come now, Holy Spirit, and captivate our hearts and captivate our minds and let fire from heaven begin to fall and consume everything that does not look like you. Spirit of the living God, we give you permission tonight to fill us with your power. We command the glory of the Lord to begin to descend and begin to fill this room. And we command the heavens to open and the angels of the Lord to begin to ascend and descend and bring the glory of the Lord in this room that healing will take place and deliverance will take place manifest your power tonight oh God send your fire send your fire send your fire send your fire Lion of Judah roar in this place Lion of Judah This is an atmosphere where your sons and your daughters come tonight to receive from you. Let the power of God begin to fill this room. Come on and let a desperate cry be released. Father, we're hungry tonight. We're desperate tonight. Send your rain tonight. Send your rain tonight. Come on, do I have any worshipers in the building tonight? We're returning to the heart of worship where it has nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with me. But everything to do with you. I call you Jehovah Child. Jehovah Shalom. I call you my healer. I call you my deliverer. I call you my strong tower. I call you my way maker. I call you the wheel in the middle of the wheel. I call you Almighty God. I call you Abba. You are not a God that is deaf, but you can hear. You are not a statue that can't feel what you feel. You are not a God that does not. But tonight I call upon the God that answers my fire to come and sweep through this sanctuary and let the glory of the Lord be. Come on, come on, somebody style. Come on, release your glory, release your glory, yes, time.
Do your work in me tonight, Father. Strip us in your presence, Father. Strip us in your presence, Father, that we may look just like you. We surrender. Have your way. Almighty God. Is there anybody in the room that just wants him to have his way? I just want you to have your way. I came in here with some stuff on me tonight, but I want you to have your way in me, mighty God. Father, this is the generation of them that will... Come on and worship with her this morning. She's not dancing now, she's worshiping. Hallelujah. Have your way, Jesus, in us. Come on, lift your voice. Help me out. Say, have your way. Have your way. Say, have your way. Have your way. Say, have your way, Jesus. Have your way. Say, have your way, Jesus. Give him a praise in this house this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 Come on, turn around and high five somebody. Come on, say, we're in the presence of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless somebody this morning. We're in the presence of the Lord this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, Pastor, I was thinking, and for all of you, Pastor, I was thinking as there, there, there's levels, and Pastor taught me something when I first came here, that you can have a lot to say, but if you're not in my arena, you can't really say much in that area. And I'm thinking about that as I think about this song we want to sing. You know, there's a song John Piki used to say, every time I turn around, he's making a way. And when we think of that, we think about God is doing great things. He's doing blessings. He's making miracles happen and things. But I was thinking about leadership, Pastor. And I say every time leaders turn around, sometimes it's usually because they're ready to give up because they're tired or they're weak or they're burdened. But I think about it. Pastor, every time you begin to turn around, if you look up, can you stand up, Pastor, one second? And just begin to turn around one time. And look, I want to encourage you in something. When you turn around, you saw all the blessings that God have allowed you to be a blessing to. God said in the book that Abraham, you would be blessed to be a blessing. Have you been blessed by our leadership? Come on, has he touched your life in some kind of way? And you know what's the greatest blessing can be? Is that when he passed the blessing on to you, you pass it on to somebody else. So somebody's here today because your neighbor or your friend or your cousin invited you. But they invited you because we trust in the man of God in this house. So this song says, God has blessed us with blessings on blessings. Blessings on blessings on blessings. Blessings on blessings on blessings. Blessings on blessings on blessings. Listen what it says. Every time I turn around, I see blessings. 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 Every time I turn around. Hey.
You'll see as we minister the next song to you. Sometimes there are obstacles in the road that can leave you feeling low and you don't know how to move forward. And sometimes there are turns you want to take but the way gets hard to trace now you're wondering how did you get here but don't you give up until you see how god is ordering your steps so you can walk into your season he that has begun a great work in you is faithful to perform it god is faithful to perform it he that has begun a great work in you is faithful to perform it our god is faithful the Lord and receive a harvest for your seed and in due time God will blow your mind with what he's planning inside of you to bless the world as it blooms a great work to perform God is faithful to perform Oh, he that has begun a great work in you He's faithful to perform God is faithful to perform So if you ever get discouraged speak to yourself and say God is doing a great work a great work he's doing a great work in me God is doing a great work he's doing a great work he's doing a great work
Philippians 1 and 6 says, this work that he has began in you, he will finish it until the day of Christ. God is doing a great work. We were created great for such a time as this. God is doing a great we are his workmanship. A great work in me. Help me sing. God is doing a great work. He's doing a great work. Great work. He's doing a great work. Great work. Pastor, he's doing a great work. We see the fruits of your labor. We love you for who you are. All you've done for us. For your sacrifices. We thank you that you're a man after God's own heart, a man that we can follow, and we love you. We thank you. God is doing a great work. He's doing a great work. Thank you, praise and worship team. Thank you. God bless you. It is my pleasure to introduce Pastor Christian Simons. He is a good friend of Pastor Shills, and he's going to come and speak on Pastor Shills as his friend and mentor. Good morning, Progressive. God is doing a great work in this community. Amen. On behalf of Reality Church and the pastors of this city, we honor you, Pastor and First Lady Shields, uh, for your sacrifice and an example of longevity in the ministry. Last year, when Pastor Shields came to preach at Reality, I told him he had a strict 30-minute window. You laugh. He looked at me like I was crazy. 30 minutes, that's the introduction. That's the announcement before the sermon. So he's getting me back. He said, you got three minutes. We'll see. We'll see. The goal of growth in Christ, the goal of becoming more like our good, faithful Savior, Jesus Christ, is not just knowing what sins and pitfalls to avoid. But more importantly, knowing the kind of faithfulness and goodness that we need to embrace. The gospel is not just the good news of what we've been saved from, but what we've been saved into. And for that reason, the Bible tells us over and over again, we need people to imitate. Paul would tell the Philippians church, brothers, Join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example that you have in us. Pastor Shields has been that for me, and both a friend and a mentor in his words, but also in his example and his actions. Whenever I speak to him, I can always anticipate a phrase coming my way. Young man. 
Not a lot of people call me young man anymore. <laughs> Pastor Shields does. And I know, I brace myself because I know it's going to follow that. Wisdom and challenge. And not just cheap wisdom, not just trivial pat answers, but hard-earned wisdom in the trenches. The kind that's taken decades to develop. And I know that this is not just the case for me. You have a profound voice in our community, among other pastors and pastors beyond even our own city. But also in his actions and what he exemplifies. Pastor Shields exemplifies generosity, trust, resolve, joy in challenge. And I can tell you firsthand, he always has a good attitude when I beat him on the golf course. <laughs> Pastor Shields loves his family, loves his wife. And I can tell you this honestly, he loves this church. Never once have I heard a discouraging word about this congregation come from his mouth. And I know it's not just self-restraint. <laughs> it's because God has blessed this community with a pastor that loves this community and a community that loves their pastor. I love the theme of this event. It's titled Celebrating 25 Years of God's Faithfulness. Even in a celebration like this, Pastor Shields cannot help but give God the glory. You deflect the praise, so we'll honor that, and we deflect the praise as well. We give God praise for your life, praise for your ministry, and we will continue to honor you by honoring God. Let's give Pastor Shields a hand. Thank you, Pastor Simons. We'd also like to welcome our elder, Robert Lee. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I am so excited to be standing here to talk about what my pastor means to me. Back in 1989, uh, my family, God blessed my family to move to Elk Grove. And upon us moving to Elk Grove, we um, was invited to a church, a little small church in Sacramento by the name of St. Paul. <laughs> you guys might know a little bit about it. And so we visited the church twice. The second time, my family and I rejoined. And right after the service was over, this young man came busting through the crowd. Now, St. Paul was always jam-packed. He comes busting through the crowd, and he says, Hi, my name is Glenn Shields, and I saw you and your family join. So I just wanted to invite, I mean, to, um, um, to welcome you here to St. Paul. And so, and then he said, and also what I want to do is invite you out to a men's Bible study on Thursday night. We're called the Young Ambassadors for Christ. I took that invitation, and from that point on, we've been the best of friends. I want to thank you, Pastor, for being a man's man, a man that, um, a man that other men want to follow. I want to thank you all so much for being the light here in this con congregation. <laughs> Pastor, you've been a blessing to me as well as this congregation. I want to thank you also for um, being there for graduations, for death in our family, for grandbabies being born. And I want to thank you particularly for this one situation that happened. I went outside one morning to uh, clean my gutters. So I went around in the backyard and put the ladder up on the house. It's a two-story house. And it was right over the patio. I got up on the top of the ladder and no more than 30 seconds, the ladder went one way and I went the other way. Fell right onto the patio, ended up with 42 stitches up under my chin, fractured jaw, concussion, torn rot rotator cup, in the hospital, one of the first people to come to my hospital bed 
was you, Pastor Shields. You came in, praise the Lord. You came in, you and my brother Rodney Scott, prayed for me, encouraged me to go. I was in the hospital for three days. Got out of the hospital, to God be the glory for me standing here, and let me say that also. It was only by his grace and his mercy that I'm standing here on this morning. Three days later, pastor comes over to the house, and i never forget what you told me. He said, Rob, you know what? You're an excellent teacher. I said, well, thank you, pastor, but what are you talking about? He said, if you didn't teach me anything through all these years, <laughs> you taught me not to climb up on that ladder <laughs> and clean my gutters. Well, let me say this, Pastor. You are an excellent teacher, too, because I have not climbed back up on that ladder, and I have not looked at any gutter. <laughs> Pastor, Sister Shields, family, love you guys. We've been through a lot together, but to God be the glory, we're still here. Happy 25th anniversary. my childhood, over the lifespan of my life, I've always experienced evil spirits and as a child we would see uh, animals uh, in the backyard. They're there one minute and gone the next. No, they didn't run over the fence or run out the yard. They just was there and then all of a sudden not. And uh, my brother's like, did you see their eyes? I said, I don't want to think about their eyes. And um, sometimes you go into a room and you just feel a heaviness in the room. Uh, my grandkids, I say about, uh, the little one's three years old now. They were saying, Grandma, there's some, somebody in the den, or there's somebody with, with red eyes in the den, Grandma. And I said, oh, okay. So I told them, well, just pray in the bedroom. Don't go to the den. I do consider them to be scary when my grandkids come running out of the den, saying there's someone down there, there's something down there. So at different times, I said, well, what do they look like? One of them said, it's an old, old man. Another one said they had red eyes, Grandma. And the baby just said, monster. And so my husband was like, you know what? We need to call the church and have them pray for the house. And so then after we had uh, Rodney Scott and Terry Hart come pray for our home, the house got peaceful. And so my grandkids wouldn't come every weekend, but then the, when they did come after that, they sent the little one to the den to see if he see anything. So he was only about one years old at the time. So he went down there and played. Then he came back and said, come on, it's good, it's good. So they all ran down to play. I just want to say that, yeah, there is such a thing as uh, spiritual warfare. And the Bible says, try the spirit by the spirit. And for us to get into God's word. So I hope this encouraged someone to come forward with what they're experiencing and hopefully to help someone on life journey as Christians. Thank you. Hey everybody, good morning. My name is Pastor Anthony Leake. I serve as the young adult pastor here at PCC. Our ministry is affectionately known as Rooted and I'm here to do the second installation of our video to announce to our young adult community and our high school graduating seniors about our sneaker ball. Listen, this is gonna be an event that you will always remember. One, we're gonna have delicious food. So we have the Vegas Brothers that's gonna cater for us. Secondly, we're gonna have top tier enter entertainment. My nephew, season 15 AGT winner, Brandon Leak is coming and he's gonna grace us with his presence and give us some phenomenal spoken words pieces, some of his most popular ones, by the way. And secondly, we have a night that's full of fun for you. So yes, there's gonna be dancing. You may be wondering, what do I wear? 
Well, listen, let me just give you a visual. Think about the Great Gatsby. So you suited and booted, but you got the flyest shoes on in the galaxy that you own. You want to be fresh to death, but you don't want to look like our boy did in the halftime Super Bowl, Jermaine Dupri, because that was not hot. All right. So if you have further questions like how do I register? Well, I have three responses for you. One, you can go and register on our website at www.progressivecc.org. Two, you can visit some of our friendly faces out in the lobby area. They'll be more than welcome, happy to uh, answer any type of questions that you might have. Or thirdly, just come and ask us and we'll be able to redirect you. Look, we want to see your face in the space because on Saturday, March 16th, from 6 to 9 p.m., we're going to have a phenomenal time at, what is it? The Sneaker Ball. We'll see you there. We would like to invite Sister Adrienne Black to come forth and speak on what Sister Shields means to her. Good afternoon, church. I just feel so privileged that I was asked to speak about my sister. <laughs> um, I met Yvette um, back at St. Paul. Um, I was a newly engaged um, a person coming there to the church, and Yvette was a, a minister's wife, and it was a group of women she was sitting with, and they all had white on. Um, <laughs> I didn't know exactly what that meant, but uh, smiling Yvette said, come, come sit with us over here. And she sort of gave me all the, the ins and outs. Um, she embraced me. Um, and she attended my wedding, and that was 29 years ago. Uh, just, yes. Um, and then when um, uh, pastor and wife called, you know, answered the call to come here to Stockton, um, my husband and I, we visited them when you were all on C Street. Um, and that same spirit that Yvette had when I came to St. Paul, that, that embracing that she has, it's just a gift. You feel special. I seen that there um, at C Street. So Yvette is very special to me. Um, she's a confidant. Um, she has a great sense of humor. Um, we can laugh and we can joke. Uh, we could talk about scripture. We could praise God. Um, just, just you name it. It's across the board. Um, she's been there for me through through tough times as well. Uh, when I lost my mom. Um, I was at the funeral, and you know, you remember those that are there for you in those times. Uh, I looked up, Yvette, smiling, just wrote a check and just handed it to me, and just to bless me. I said, wow, wow, I, I want to keep this type of friendship. Um, and so more recently, I, I lost my sister to cancer, and... Um, I look up again at my sister's funeral. It was Yvette and Brooke coming from Sacramento to support me. Um, so I love her. She, she's so dear to me. Uh, me and Yvette, we have a unique relationship uh, because not only do I see her here at, at church, praising, I get to chase praise God with her, get to uh, share that, but I'm also her hairstylist. <laughs> for decades now, um, and uh, she'll, she'll text me, and she'll say, can you get me in? You got an opening? Girl, just make me cute. Just what you do, whatever you do, girl, just make me cute. And so I've been doing that. So she has an extended family at the salon as well. Everyone, everyone loves uh, Vivette. You, it is, you know, what you see is what you get. She's got a great demeanor, um, a genuine concern for people. Uh, so you have yourself a special first lady here. Um, and that's for the whole clan. They know they're my family. All of the Shields are my family. So happy 25th anniversary. Okay. So now we're going to transition to something very special. Um, for all of you who may not know, I had the pleasure of being Pastor Shields' administrative assistant. He tells me what to do, when to do, 
And uh, he gave me an assignment to ask one of his children to speak on what their parents mean to them. And um, Pastor, your children are grown now. And their response was, we've been doing this for 25 years. We are tired of speaking on what our parents mean to us. Now, I'm a smart woman. I didn't tell him that. But we came up with something because there's a new generation, and they're now going to speak on what you mean to them as grandparents. Hey, happy anniversary! Happy anniversary! <laughs> Hi, I'm Joseph, and this is what my grandparents mean to me. Mom, Ben, and Pops, you guys are people I can always rely on, and are always there for me, even if I don't know anything. Your love and support affects the way I talk and act towards people, and for that I'm grateful. Happy 25th anniversary. Love you guys. Good. 
many doors, so many doors, so many ways you made, so many ways you time made, time after time, so many times you will Come on, just stay right there for me. So many doors, so you many doors, you think about all the ways so he made, didn't he do it time and so time again? Before we do this next introduction, there is a Mercedes Benz, your lights have been on, uh, 5BWH442, a Mercedes Benz, your lights are on. If we will get a microphone, um, it is beyond my pleasure to introduce our pastor, Glenn Shields, as he comes to introduce our speaker. Thank you. Amen. Good morning. Let's give the praise team another hand for a job well done. It is, it is my honor and uh, privilege to introduce our uh, morning speaker, uh, none other than Dr. Cliff Ash. Uh, Dr. Ash is uh, visiting us uh, here to celebrate uh, with us all the way from Pennsylvania. 
uh, Dr. Ash is the uh, was the founding pastor of the Day Spring Day Springs Ministry in Middletown, Pennsylvania. He founded the church and he served there as pastor for over 30 years. Uh, today he has retired. He's also uh, the founder of the Mighty Men's of Valor Men's Conference, a national uh, conference, and and it was one of the most phenomenal men ministries uh, in this nation. And so I'm talking about thousands of men uh, every year would come together as Dr. Ash led that effort. I was also blessed uh, uh, one year to be one of the uh, speakers, the teachers there. And uh, that ministry enhanced my life tremendously. Uh, Dr. Cliff Ash is an unusual man. He's He's been with us on several occasions as far as our men's retreats and men's conferences. Uh, he is gifted. He's a man's man. But what I also love about uh, Dr. Ash for me, uh, he always has been a person that I could be real with, that I could be transparent with. He's always uh, loaded wisdom and compassion. He has been married to his wife, Audrey, for some 56 years. Amen. And, and again, and he's a lightweight comedian that think he's funny, but he's, but he's really not that funny. Amen. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but I love him, and uh, I'm so grateful uh, that uh, he consented to come and to share with uh, me on this uh, 25th anniversary. So I'd like to present to some and introduce to others our speaker for the morning, uh, Dr. Cliff Ash. Will you come? Amen. What a man. He uh, gave me credit for starting those things and finishing those things, and it gives me great pleasure to encourage him and saying that this ain't over. Today, I'm going to give you some insight. I was going to, it was going to be positive, and Sidney said I was a lightweight <laughs> comedian. Now, anybody that knows me, I can't let that go by. <laughs> That's like running up on me and punk slapping me. <laughs> so, I mean, I know this is an anniversary. I'm going to be positive as I can. But I just want to thank you, Progressive, for being just such a wonderful church. I mean, I travel all over the country and world. And this is a phenomenal ministry because it's led by a phenomenal man. That slide that's up there on the screen right now, uh, that's my life. I've been looking for men. And, developing men and encouraging men and and Glenn has been one of the most faithful loving and loyal men that I have ever met amen and I believe a lot of that has to do with the fact that he stood on the shoulders of Ephraim Williams now some of you may not know Pastor Ephraim Williams but we have Lamont Harris over here that has uh, also been, I mean, when we were younger, I mean, we didn't have gray hair. <laughs> Ephraim was the only one with gray hair. But when you stand on the shoulders of a great man and you learn what you need to know to be a man, one of the best things that could ever happen to a woman is to find a godly good man. Now, I want you to know that even though I've been called to minister to men, I wish I was half the man my woman, my wife is. Now, I know I lost some of you, <laughs> but my wife led me to Christ. And she hasn't ever given up on me in the 56 years that we've been married. 
As a matter of fact, I thought it was kind of strange over the years that she would have what I'm working to get. That'll hit you later. <laughs> when God gives you a wife, he gives you a good thing, and he equips her with a mirror in the hand of God to tell you men what to do. Now, the reason I got started in men's ministry was because men don't generally listen to their wives. So what I decided to do was I decided to speak woman. So over the years, men thought I was so wonderful when really all I did was take what they've been saying and give it to them through a male body. And they have esteemed me, but I learned it from her. Now you're saying, now what does that got to do with the anniversary? Well, he and they are just such wonderful, magnificent people, and he hasn't stopped listening to her yet. Thank God. I'm going to tell you the truth. Pastor Glenn is a next level man. When we had the Mighty Men of Valor conference after the 20 years, we celebrated, walked away from it. And what we had was the men came to us for knowledge, understanding, for fellowship, for the word. But now what I've done is I've changed it. Now I'm going to men with potential. I want men that are toe up from the flow up. As a matter of fact, most men will tell you they're doing fine, but what I generally do is ask the wives and the girlfriends, if your man needs God or needs a better walk in life, send him up front. <laughs> now, the only reason a woman would not do that is because they got to go home. But I'm so grateful today for your anniversary, 25th anniversary. I had one of those. I had a 30th. But I'm telling you right now, this ministry is so special. I don't know how special. I don't know if you know how special this ministry is. This doesn't happen every day in America. This is a transgenerational person. I mean, I believe in my heart of hearts that Pastor Glenn and Yvette are building a ministry that's going to continue even after they're done. Yes. Now, this is biblical now. Right. May a generation not yet born praise the Lord for my having lived. Yes. May a generation born praise the Lord for my having lived. In other words, a ministry that will continue even after you're gone. Yes. That's this ministry. But you all have decided to pick up the banner, and decided to move forward in Christ now because you are disciples of Christ, all at different levels. Now, those of you who think you're too old to serve the Lord or you want to give somebody a chance, that's a lie from the pit. You just don't want to serve because God has this thing called an encore ministry. Matter of fact, that means old people still have a place to serve. What it is, you're just tired, and you feel it's your time to retire. So I'm here to tell you today, may a generation not yet born praise the Lord for you having lived, but you got to serve till you die. God says you enter your rest later. So here's what I want to start this off with. I want to start this off with by, first of all, letting you know how Pastor Glenn got to where he is. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 3. May a generation not yet born praise the Lord for my having lived. 3-3, three, three. let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind it around your neck. Write it upon the tablets of your heart. Then, say then, then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Love and faithfulness yields God's affection and love. You will reap what you sow. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind it around your neck. Write it upon the tablets of your heart. Then you will win. It's something to win. Now let me see if I can do this thing. 
Ready? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. I'm pressing. All right. Probably pressing the wrong stuff. Oh, I got to turn it on? Oh. Does that mean this works for turning on Christians too? Is that what that means? Let me see. Oh, look at that. That's all right. I want to just share with you today something that's very important. When you become a Christian, a person that God has molded and shaped in the furnace of affliction, it is very, very important to know that not only is he shaping you for you, but he's shaping you for those that come after you. Now, you would think that David killing Goliath would put him in the Hall of Fame and give him time just not to do nothing. But little did David know that when he slayed Goliath, that his next Goliath was hanging out behind a tent looking at him called Saul. We have Pastor Glenn who has come through a lot. They've come through a lot. They've been in the furnace of affliction. But then David earned the right to lead men and their families because he's a giant killer. Most of us still run from the giant. You all know what some of your giants are? Those are the things that you brought from the old life into the new life and they haven't left yet. But I'm going to show you before I'm done that the reason God left those old things in you is so that you have something to fight. God, when you gave your life to Christ, you said, Lord, I will follow you with all of my heart. But then there were some things that you just couldn't live without going into another new life. So you brought over some, I don't want to mention what those things are because you're going to act like you don't know. But I'm going to talk about some people brought over masturbation. Now, you don't have to say nothing. Some people brought over lying, cheating, stealing, gossiping, contention. Whatever it was you brought over into your new life that you couldn't live without, God said, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that to show you how close to me you really are. Because, see, you can fight a person or a situation that you never knew. But God says, I want you sparring with the stuff that you couldn't live without. So the reason I'm saying that is because Pastor Glenn has slain giants. Yvette has slain giants. They've gone after giants. They, haven't, they ran after them, and, and now they have an obligation. And here's the obligation. 1 Samuel. David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. When his brothers and his father's household heard about it, they went down to him there. All those, are you all listening? Yeah. All those who were in distress. Now look, when you kill a giant, you would think that you would get a good congregation. You would think that all the saved people under Saul would become yours. You would think that all of the people who were committed at tithers at their last church would come to this one tithing. But it says, all those, progressive, for such were some of you, who were in distress or in debt or discontented, gathered around him, and he became their commander. About 400 men were with him. Now, first of all, progressive, let me just ask you to be honest. Is some of them you? I mean, when you came to Progressive, were you in debt, in distress, discontent? Just say amen. amen. So now you got children who are coming after you, who think that you're the best thing since sliced bread. You never told them that you were in distress, in debt, and discontent. 
So what Pastor Shields has done is he now looks out at his congregation, first of all, his household, who didn't believe that he was even worthy to be the next chosen one. But yet and still, he learned what he learned, just like Pastor Shields and Yvette, in, in, in St. Paul, you learn how to slay the lion and the bear. So when you face your uncircumcised Philistine, preparation for the future. His private victories were never seen by his brothers, his father, or anybody else. His victories were done on the backside of the mountain with some sheep, lions, and bears. And you got to understand, Pastor Shields has not always been a pastor. It's not always come up in the church right from the womb. No, no. The reason he can love you is because of the things that he's been through. On the back side of the mountain. To the one who's forgiven of much will love much. You say, now, Pastor Shields is a dynamite loving man. That's because he was a mess. Now, I'm saying something to y'all that you don't know, but the bottom line is you can always tell a person by the love that they share for others by how bad they were before they got Christ. You got a loving, faithful family that's leading you, but they learn to love you because God first loved them. And what he did on the backside of the mountain, the lion and the bear, now he had to face this public enemy. Beloved, in your lifetime, you're going to have to be trained and developed on the backside of the mountain, but there is a public enemy coming your way. Some of you right now don't even know how to fight spiritually. You do know how to fight because that's what you always did, and some of you still do. You fight carnally. You outcuss a person. You outlie a person. You outcheat a person. But God said, the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but spiritual to the pulling down a stronghold. So the question then is become, how are you going to take the way you learn to fight, like David, with a sword, with a sling? Now, how are you going to face this Saul character that you're not allowed to touch? Oh, wait. <laughs> So now you got a driver in front of you giving you the blues. Pick a finger. I'm in church. I ain't going to show you one. But see, that's how you fight, how you fight. Young people fight like that, and, 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 and older people fight like that. But they look around first, especially if they're part of the church, look around first, make sure. Ain't no members watching them. <laughs> Pastor Glenn, I remember I was at the grocery store, Giant Foods, and there was like seven items. This person in front of me had a basket full of stuff. Basket full. So I'm seething. You know how you, when you contemplate whether or not your, your walk and your talk should line up with what you're getting ready to say? I looked around, didn't see any members. Said, this is a good time to take action. So I first started, not like you all now. So I started to say something. Like, lady, you know, you, you, you just out of order. You just need to learn how to read the sign. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I let it go. Get up. The cashier says, hi, Pastor Ash, how are you? <laughs> how many of y'all know that God will cover you until you recover? There's a whole lot of stuff you should have suffered for, but you didn't have to suffer because God covered you and waited for you to recover. And see, even with this, now I'm out here teaching men, but I don't ever tell them about this unless they think they are more spiritual than me. I had a, uh, an opportunity to go to 
years ago to, uh, where was it? A place where they had a casino. Y'all don't know nothing about that. <laughs> so my, my, my children said, Dad, bring me a silver dollar back. I said, no problem. I'm there for a meeting. Pastor Ash, I get five silver dollars. I ain't got but two kids. <laughs> and then it hit me. What am I going to do with these other three? Silver dollars. Ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> I'm coming down the escalator. Ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. These silver dollars are getting heavy. I can't keep carrying these silver dollars around. I need to put, a pla put them in a place where they can, you know, I just got to get rid of them. So I go into the casino, ding, 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 ding. I'm ready to put it in. And God says, if you do that, I'm going to let you win. And I'm going to put it in the newspaper. How many of y'all know I went home with three silver dollars? <laughs> but the reason I didn't do what I wanted to do was because God scared the life into me. And can you imagine if you had to suffer for the things that you did without God's covering? Can you imagine going through life the way you're going through life without Pastor Shields and Yvette? Who are teaching you how to do what it is you need to do. And these people that God sent to David in debt, in distress, discontent are the same people later on in Scripture to become mighty men of valor. Amen. And how their families were blessed. <laughs> how their families were taken from them, but then God touched David to pursue and get back what was taken. I just want to say today, some of you lost some stuff along the way. Your pastor and wife have been trying to help you to get back what God wants you to have back, but to move on from what it is you lost. See, some of you are bitter about the stuff you lost when really you need to move on. In the church, we got too many people crying over the stuff that God took that probably was no good for them. And if the truth be made known, God didn't take your wife, your husband, your kids. They belonged to him from the beginning. So when you look at this, you got a pastor and wife who are just so committed. Let's see if I'm doing this now. Am I doing it right? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. Do I got to turn it on again? You know, that's the thing about pastoring. You got to keep turning on folk. You keep hitting the button for them to become spiritual, and it just don't work. And then you get to the point to where the thing ain't working, and you throw it at them. No, no, you don't. Is it on now? Hallelujah. This scripture is basically saying the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but spiritual to the pulling down. I mean to tell you, some of you are still trying to win the old way. You can't do it. I mean, you got your foot half in the church, half in Christ, half in the world, and you're just trying to balance all of these lifestyles. So where you are right now... Uh, <laughs> Though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to, demol to demolition, to demolish strongholds. What I want to share with you today, and this thing driving me crazy, er, I want, if nothing else, I'm going to leave that alone, and I just want to talk to you for a minute. I want to talk to you. Your pastor and wife have been forged in the fire. God takes each of us 
through hardship to develop our worship. Hardship develops worship. God says, look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to refine you, but not like silver. Now, I have the scripture here. I can pull it up to you. But in other words, can I move? Not like silver. Now, watch this. If I were to refine you like silver, I'd take all of the mess out of you. God says, I'm not going to refine you like silver. I'm going to leave some mess in you. How many of y'all know you got mess in you? Pastor Glenn, all, everybody holding up their hand. Now, let me ask you a question. Why do you think that God, who wants you pure, did not make you pure? The reason is that you have to learn how to do battle. And you have to be battle tested. You have to fight and fight right. Can you all put up, uh, uh, let me see, Judges chapter 3. Judges chapter 3, if you can put that up in the NIV. Judges chapter 3 is really, and I'm closing, is doing this. God gave Joshua a command. He said, everywhere, Pastor Glenn, you put your foot, I'm going to make you successful. Everywhere. And God did it. Progressive, this is the outcropping of what God promised to your pastor. That after he did his time of preparation, then he would continue on into the promised land. But this is not a new thing because he had a good report back in the old days. How many of y'all know all of you are Egyptians? You used to live in Egypt. Some of you had timeshares in Egypt. You say, now that's not true. Yes, it is. You were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. Born in Egypt, shaped in Egypt. But then what happened to Joshua, he went forward and then God told him, what I want you to do is destroy all those nations that have come against our people. Now, what that means is all the things that have been holding you back, all the things that have been holding you down, I want you to go out there and I want you to destroy them. Obliterate them. So then what happened was Joshua died. Elders, the elders of the church took over. Progressive and the church continued on as long as the elders lived. But after the elders died, they forgot what progressive looked like. They forgot what they grew up under and what they had. So what they decided to do, what was right in their own eyes, they started to accept some of the things that were rejected by the old guard. They started to do some things that were never supposed to do with the old guard. So what happened is they were cool as long as the pastor was there. As long as the elders there. You know what it's like? It's like your children when you leave. And they're younger. You know, you expect them to do good. But what do they do? They do just what you did. You know what I think is amazing? The parents that are so shocked at what their kids do under their leadership. Don't you know the scripture that says you reap? And if everybody that knew you when you were a kid could speak about you, your kids would look like angels. <laughs> now, now, Glenn, I'm going to tell you the truth. My son, my son, now you wouldn't know nothing about this, but my son was a mess. My daughter was too. But what happened was my son would bring his book bag home, and I'd ask him, how did it go today? How did you have any tests? No, I had no tests. You have any tests today? No, I had no tests. You ain't got no homework? I I didn't get my homework back. I said, you got any homework? No, they didn't give me no homework. (laughs) 
I said, son, bring me your book bag. Do you know my son had all them uh, Fs stuck up in the, all of the Gs and Ds and Fs. And <laughs> I opened up the bag. I said, sit down, son. And I'm looking, F, F, D, incomplete. So I try him again. I said, son, this is what we're going to do. You need to, go to, you need to go to school, take your homework, do study and uh, so then, about three weeks later, I said, son, bring me your book bag. He said, why are you going to look at my book bag? Didn't you tell me to, you know, bring stuff home? I said, but I ain't got nothing in three weeks. So I looked at the book bag, and there was the papers again, Fs and everything else. I wonder if God were to look in your backpack, what would it show? In terms, are you educated beyond your obedience? In other words, what you've been taught, are you doing? How much of what you've been taught are you really doing? You know, it's in the book bag, but ain't nobody checked your book bag lately. So when I checked the book bag, I said, oh, my goodness. I'm tired. I'm tired of whooping this boy. <laughs> I'm serious. I am tired of whooping Mark. I mean, I know that if I ask him anything, he going to get a whooping. And if he lied to me, he going to get two whoopings. So I wasn't the kind of father that you are. At that time, I was, you know, I was okay, but my prayer was this. Lord, teach him to lie better. Because <laughs> I'm tired of whooping him, Lord. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just tired of whooping him. And, 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 you know, the same thing happens in the church. Sometimes there's some people that are lying so much to your face. You say, just make them better liars, Lord. That way I don't have to confront them with discipleship. But watch, watch God. God took my son that didn't want nothing to do with ministry, didn't want nothing to do with the church, but he was there. When the church was open, I was there. I said, son, do uh, you want to pastor someday or do you want to? No. I ain't even thinking about that. You know what he's doing now? Full time at a church in Maryland. I couldn't convince him. I couldn't steer him. I couldn't. But see, God knew all the time what was in him. And I was hoping that it came out on my watch. How many of y'all know that God, the way he operates, a little later on, much more of and of the same kind, you just got to give God some time because he does not ripen a peach with a blowtorch. And for such were some of you. Some of you haven't hit potential yet, full potential yet, because you are just decided to coast. <laughs> You'd rather be a pace car than a race car. <laughs> you have a, a, a race car past a wife, and you all are still pacing yourself. Now, you know what I've learned? Most people won't appreciate, truly appreciate what they have until they lose it. That's it. Some of you that haven't had a word to say about your pastor and wife are going to crowd this building if you lose your pastor and your wife. It's time for you to speak up. Being battle tested is something that's necessary because he trained you to be a warrior. He trained you to... Hide the scriptures in your heart that you might not sin against him. So I have a question. I would like to ask every man in this room who knows in their heart of heart that God has more in store for them and that you have not yet decided to go to the next level in your life. Because you understand it's step by step, inch by inch. It's one of those things that God does, and he brings you to the point of recognizing that you could become more than you are. But I believe this about a man. When a man makes a, a decision to want to go to the next level, stop asking yourself, what is it? Just be willing to go. 
God told Abraham, look, tomorrow, you know, when you get up, just go on, go, go to where, I, where you think I want you to go. He didn't tell him go east, west, north, or south. He just said, when you get up in the morning, just go. Leave the earl of Chaldee. So he put his foot out. Now watch this. All you have to do is be willing to put your foot out in the direction that you think God wants you to go, and then he has the ability, because of your faith, to redirect you at any point in your journey. But if you don't decide to go, he's not going to show you where and which direction. Now, Abraham ended up in the place he should have been, but not without the first step. So I'm asking the men today. Now, I know what the devil's doing right now. The devil's saying, look, man, you're going to try to get me into something I don't want to get into. First of all, God don't do that. If you feel like you have another level in you, then that's because you feel you have another level in you to go. So if that's you, I'm going to ask all the men in here, do you feel you got more in store? I want you to stand up. That there's another level. There's another level. Pastor Glenn, come over here for a second. I want you to look out at these men. Now, when Pastor Glenn, why don't you stand up there so you can see this? You see them? You got it? All right, men, now you stood not for Pastor Glenn, but you stood because there was something in you that you felt was unfinished business. Now, while you're standing, I want all of the wives and girlfriends of men in here. Your man didn't stand. But you know there's a lot more in him. I want you to make him stand. Yeah, just say, get up. Get up. Get up. See, here's the thing about a man. Some men have to be made to stand up in order to realize what God has for them. They say, well, pastor, you're calling them out. No, I'm calling them up. Uh, so, men, look around. Look around. Can you imagine what this church would be if you guys went to the next level? I mean, seriously, you got a great church. Now, while you're still up, I'm going to ask the lady. You ain't getting out of jail free. <laughs> if you know that you have not been, should have been in discipleship, or should have been in Bible study, and you have not been doing it, I want you to stand. If you're ready to go to your next level, the women. You know you have a Bible study here. You know you have discipleship here, but you have not done it, committed 100%. Look around. Look around. Can you think of a better way to honor your pastor and his wife than sitting up under the word and becoming who God made you be? I mean, seriously, can you imagine what this church would be? It's functioning now without you. What do you think all this preaching is about to get you to go to the next level, to get you to be a next level husband, a next level wife, a next level Christian? So now you're all standing. What do you think about this? this? This is you evaluating you. That's like me in high school. The teacher says, grade your own papers. <laughs> How many of y'all know I got A's? <laughs> but what you need is somebody in your life that can tell you that there's more in you than you have actually utilized. Amen. You have become educated beyond your obedience. This is your day. You talk about an anniversary. You know what would bless their hearts? Pastor's heart, Yvette's heart, is if you all would submit to discipleship. That's what he did. And look what he's become and what they've become. So today, I'm going to ask you right where you are. Now, please, this is not a play time. This is a good time. Now, those of you that are seated, some of you are wondering, you may think, look, I got out of jail free. No, you didn't. God is not mocked. Some of the people that are standing are not serious, and some of the people who are sitting want to be. So those of you that are sitting and didn't stand and didn't allow yourself to move to that position, I want you to honor pastor and his wife by committing yourself to discipleship. 
I want to I wanna attend, I want to grow, I want to develop, I want to be the person that God wants me to be, and I want Progressive to be even a better church than it has been. Amen? Now, while you're standing, while you're standing, let's pray. Father, we ask your blessing upon those who have been honest enough, Lord, to declare about themselves against you and you alone, you and you alone, Lord, have I sinned. I've taken the word of God for granted. I've taken my pastor and his teaching for granted. I've taken this church for granted. And while so many people are serving the Lord in this place, Today, we want to acknowledge the ones that are getting ready to be deputized to take this church to another level. It is an awesome church, and if it stayed the way it was, Lord, the way it is, it would still be awesome. But Father, some of these people are in debt, in distress, and discontent, and you gave them a David, and we're asking, Father, that you would make the men mighty and the women of great price. Bring this congregation together that everybody in here would go find somebody to bring to the church, to healing. Lord, we trust you. And we thank you for showing us who we are and what we could be. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, King. At this time, we ask everyone to stand. The doors of the church are now open. That commitment. Uh, pastor, but first and foremost to Christ, is what God's calling all of us to do. And that's why Jesus died on the cross for your sins, to bring you back into right fellowship. And so we want to give you an opportunity just to come forward if that's not you. You may just have some questions. You may not be ready to make a decision at this time, but you want more information. This time is for you. I'm going to ask you to do it at this moment, this time. Come on, thank you so much. Just come forward, man, to the left. My left, your right. Is there another one out there? You just may have questions, and that's okay. We have individuals who can speak to you about what it means to accept Christ uh, as your Savior. So we never want to take that for granted um, as we celebrate a pastor and his wife today how much better uh, your life can be if you come into the fellowship of Christ on this day. God bless you. Keep on coming down. Is there anyone else? God bless you back there. Young ladies, come on forward. God bless you, young man, right that way there. It's okay to have questions. That's okay. Right here to my left. God bless you, young people. God bless you. This is not about perfection. It's about like uh, Dr. Ash was saying, we all have stuff. And what better way to get rid of your stuff that you're going to carry in with you but have some help as you're going through it. So if that's you again, this is your opportunity. But if you are already a believer and you are looking for a church home, you are more than welcome to come forward this time as well. We would love to have you here. Again, Pastor, I would say we're not perfect, but we will love on you as we walk and do this journey together. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward? This opportunity is for you. All right, let's, you can be seated. Again, Dr. Ash, thank you for that message, sir. Forwards in the fire. Pastor, you and Sister Shields have been singed a little bit, huh, after 25 years. 
And so at this time um, in the service, if you are in ministry that would like to present Pastor and Sister Shields uh, a gift on behalf of your ministry, this is your opportunity to do so. We ask you to come forward and stand over here and form a line to my right there. Um, and then also, I will say this now and I'll say it again towards the end. Uh, for those who want to give um, individually, we will have baskets at the doors. So you can just drop off your cards and your gifts there. So as we exit the building after the service is over, you can drop your cards and your gifts there. Today is not a day to drop your tithes and offerings in the basket. All gifts today are going to Pastor and Sister Shields. You can continue to give your gifts, your, your tithes and offerings online. If you do give it online, it will not go to Pastor and Sister Shields. We have a cash app information that we will put up for those of you who want to give in a digital manner. Um, and so we ask you to follow that process accordingly. So we have uh, Mama Smith. Oh, Lord have mercy. Okay, I'm going to give some instructions. You can't tell the whole story. Love you. We appreciate you, Pastor Sister Shields. Drop it in the basket, hug them, and, and keep on moving. All right? Now, Terry, if they take too long, get the organ on them. There you go. All right, here we go. Mama Smith. Son, Mama's so happy to see you. 25 years, you have grown. And guess what? Mother has grown right with you. And in fact, so much. Thank you for everything that you've done. On behalf of the motherboard, we just thank you for never forgetting us. Mother, will you please stand? Uh, Pastor Shields makes sure that every year he take us to places that we never will go and have a been and everything. He's so good to us and we thank you for everything. So on behalf of the mother's board, Bless you. Now, Evan, I think I'll give it to you. Okay. You know what to do. <laughs> Thank you for being my son and daughter. Thank you, Mama. Okay. Pastor and Sister Shields, on behalf of the deacons and the deaconesses, we give you this gift and we thank you for your um, servant leadership. We thank you for the great example you give us as husband and wife in your marriage and in everything else. And we love you. Pastor and Sister Shields, I am here on behalf of Celebrate Recovery and our step study small groups and we are just just we love you we thank you for all your encouragement and all your support and again we say happy anniversary 25 years we pray that god will bless you with many many more thank you Pastor and Sister Shields, I am here on behalf of the women's ministry. Women, you know who you are. Um, we want to just say that we love you and we recognize that we are progressive as a church and as a ministry because of who you are. So we love you. We appreciate your leadership and uh, we will continue to follow as you follow Christ. Amen. Good morning. I'm here to present this card to you, Pastor Shields and First Lady. I'm here representing the Women of Worship small group, and I'm here to tell you, Pastor, I am glad to be here at this church. I've grown immensely from your teachings and my small group, and I appreciate you. Thank you. Praise God for you. Oh, 
I love you guys. And we love you too. And you've been a definite in my life. Amen. You've been a real blessing. Amen. Can I have the elders and their wives stand, please? Pastor, my sister, on behalf of the elders and our wives, we just want to present you with this gift. I'm going to give it to her. <laughs> we want to say how much we appreciate you guys. 25 years is a long time, but God has definitely been faithful. Bless you both. Love you. And we're here on behalf of Student Ministries, which is the children, youth, and young adults. Uh, we appreciate you. We don't have nothing to give you. Uh, physically, but uh, check your cash app because it's in there. All right. Thank you. Hello, Pastor and Sister Shields. Me and Ashley are here on behalf of the Health Awareness Ministry, so we got to keep y'all looking right and tight, right? So we got y'all some gift card for Sprout so you can get you some snacks or something. You know, you get some strawberries, I need some. Get me some too. But make sure y'all go shopping and get some healthy stuff for y'all to have. <laughs> I'm here on behalf of the welcome committee. Does everybody get stand up on the welcome committee? Awesome. We have this really heavy envelope. I'm going to put it in the basket. <laughs> we love you. We're blessed. We know we're blessed. And we're just grateful. Thank you for all you do. Pastor Sheila. on behalf of the media ministry we sent those gifts to you thank you for your leadership and may there be many many more good afternoon everyone <laughs> um, first the pastor shields we want to thank you for standing on word the word of God for you just being the man of God that you are and you're the same whether you're in the pulpit or not and we don't see that a lot so we're thankful for that and to Sister Shields <laughs> thank you for your wisdom your crazy comebacks your leadership and then just for over I think we're going on 12 years now just going four day in the morning before God so just from your slim sisters linked in motion we just want to say we love you and we thank you Happy twenty fifth anniversary. <laughs> Pastor and Miss Shields from Beware. From behalf of the King's Kids Choir, we have a gift for you. Well, all the ushers stand, please, if you're not already standing. <laughs> Pastor, Sister Shields, on behalf of the PCC Usher Ministry, we love you and we thank you. And here's a little appreciation. Pastor Shields, um, I just want to say thank you. And Sister Shields also, on behalf of the men's ministry and small groups 
uh, men of honor of which I represent, we want to say thank you for all you do, all you've done, and I know it's not over, so thank you for everything you're about to do. love you so. Um, on behalf of our small group, uh, the Saved and Seasoned Sisters, can we have our small group to stand, please? <laughs> With the Saved and Sisters Sisters small women's group, we would like to thank Pastor and Sister Shields for their 25 years of faithful service to the Progressive family. We love you, and we pray that God will continue to bless you and keep you both safe. We love you. <laughs> Pastor Shields and Sister Yvette, this is in behalf of the Progressive Culinary Ministry. It has been a pleasure for us to serve you and your family and your guests whenever, on Sunday and in between. We thank you, we love you for your leadership and looking forward to many more. Uh, Pastor and Sister Shields, this is from my brother's keeper, um, small group led by Kevin Payne. And I want to thank you guys for everything. I want to thank you especially for getting me involved in a small group. I think everybody should be a part of a small group. Um, everybody. Because it's a good thing. I, I got brothers now. And I think you're going to be riding in the car or something. <laughs> Give it back. We are done. Now we're going to have some remarks from our pastor and his wife of almost 40 years? It only is 40 years. 40 years. So it's an event. Oh my. Okay, let me see. Oh yeah. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I just want to say personally, thank you for all your love. And my husband and I, when we think about this church, we thank God for being in a place of love. And you all not only on today, but out throughout the years, demonstrate your kindness and love. And so we're just grateful. We're grateful to be in a church that we don't mind coming to. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for that. And then I want to thank the Lord for a husband that I can respect at home and at church. And we don't have to come and fake um, you know it's a blessing to have a man of integrity that's leading us inside the church, outside the church, on the golf course, you know. <laughs> and, you know, so we're grateful. We're just really, really grateful. And so my husband asked, he asked me, what would I say to him after 25 years? And, of course, I had a note that I can't find, but I wanted to say briefly that I told him to keep his eyes on the cloud. So when the cloud moves, just like when the Israelites were in the desert, then you move. And then I also want to encourage him to stay in the word with Joshua 1, 8, 9, because that's when we'll continue to have good success. And then lastly, I want to encourage all of us for us to continue to love each other so that the world will know that we are Christians by our love. So again, God bless you. I want to thank you for the bottom of the heart for being a kind and warm and loving congregation and a place that we don't mind serving. So let's continue to look to the hills for what's coming with our help because our help cometh from the, the maker of heaven and what? Amen. God bless you. God bless you. All right. We'd like to say good afternoon. I am humbled. I have, I really don't take time to reflect, uh, but this being 25 years, I have really uh, been in that state of mind of reflecting. And I want to say to each of you, I am grateful to God for you. People don't have to be nice. 
I was telling Dr. Ash, I said, listen, you preach, encourage the people, because I don't have horror stories. I don't have any. Mother Smith told me 25 years ago, she said, listen, we are good people, but we are hurting people. If you love us, we will love you back. And I can honestly say I have loved you, and you have loved me back. So to God be the glory for all that he has done. It is, I was thinking, I started my career in the United States Air Force. Four years. Then I went to the state of California for 15 years. And now today I stand here after 25 as the pastor of this church. And I can say to you, the last 25 have been the best 25 years of my life. <laughs> to my wife, 40 years. Uh, I couldn't have done this without you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for your partnership. I cannot express how you have been my secret weapon, always there behind the scenes to encourage, to love me, and to tell me to pick up behind myself. <laughs> so, so again, I want to say thank you. Uh, to all of my children, you know, I forget y'all grown. Y'all good and grown, but you better be glad Coco didn't tell me that. I'd have made one of y'all get up here. But to my children, I want you to know I'm proud of you. Thank you. It's, it's, a lot of fathers can't say this, but y'all never caused me one day a problem. And so I just thank you for the men and the women uh, that you are and for my bonus daughters now, my two sister-in-law, daughter-in-laws. Love y'all. Thank you, the grandkids. Last but not least, uh, I told her privately, but I got to say something publicly. Sister Chandler, where you at, Sister Chandler? Your hand, where's your, you in here? There you go, way in the back. I talked to Mama last night. 25 years ago, I came to this church it was in South C Street. Sister Loretta Chandler met me at the gate with some keys. And she looked at me and said, it's on you now. <laughs> I want to say, Mama, thank you for loving me. Thank you for teaching me. Sister Chandler taught me and led me and kept me out of trouble. She was my greatest defender. She gave me enough room to make mistakes but never allowed my leash to get too long where she couldn't jerk it. <laughs> she had a way of simply saying to me, now, Pastor, I don't think that's wise. God knew I needed a mother, and you became that mother inside and outside. So I want you to know, Loretta Chandler, I'll forever be indebted to you. And I love you and appreciate you. Amen. Will the staff, will you come forth? Cliff Ash, what I have discovered, no man can be successful without others wanting to see him successful. I have the greatest staff this side of the Mississippi. And I want to say to each of you, I've done my best to demonstrate how much I love you, how much I care about you. Thank you so much for your hard work. Thank you for your dedication. Thank you for all of the work that you do behind the scenes. I stand in front and I'm a spokesperson, 
But I want you to know, as I've shared with you privately, I share with you publicly. I wouldn't be without you. So we appreciate you and we love you. And to God be the glory for all that you have done. Give them another hand for a great job. Amen. Now, as we as I prepared my last messages, uh, Sister Coco, come here, girl. Uh, Rocio, continue to stand up here. They worked so hard. Come here. This is my latest secret weapon. Thank you for your love, your commitment. She's always said, Pastor, I want to make you look good. Thank you for making me look good. And we love you. Rocio, come here. This is my girl. I raised her. It's been my honor to see you grow. It's been my honor to see you develop into the woman that you are. You know I love you. And we appreciate you. Angie, stand up. Let's give Sister Angie a hand for this wonderful design and all that she has done. Amen. Again, God bless each of you. Again, uh, thank you for loving me. And God, thank you. God, thank you for entrusting me to lead your people. And God, I pray that you have been honored by the things that we have done. To you be praise, honor, and glory. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise for who he is. Dr. Ash, thank you, brother. You encourage our hearts today. Continue. God not finished with you. So keep doing what you're doing. God bless you. So we have a few more instructions, okay? Uh, one, we're going to put the Cash App information up on the screen. For those of you who want to give... Uh, in a digital manner. Uh, if you're too slow, take a picture and you can do cash app any time of the day. Secondly, in order to help celebrate, again, we have cupcakes and cookies for those who don't eat cupcakes. So when you go out the doors to your right and to your left, there are cupcakes out there for you. If you go out this door as well, we also have some on that side. We have a variety of cupcakes for you to take home, one per person. We also have some vegan ones for those who are vegan. Don't become a vegan today to try it out. Okay? And also I want to say one last thing. Uh, we have the Spanish ministry here with us today. And yesterday, Ronald and Terry and that team had to come out and put translators on the seats and order headphones. So... Toronto and the media team and Terry, thank you for your time in order to be able to come out so that we can all worship together. We hope that you guys are able to follow along with us uh, back there in our technology. And again, if you have any cards or gifts individually, we have the ushers at the doors. Go ahead and drop them in the baskets. And don't forget your cupcakes out there. God bless you. Let's stand as we receive our pastor and his wife as they make their way out the doors. Let's get a benediction. Lord, we thank you. We ask you to watch over us and keep us, Lord God. You are so good. We appreciate you for what you do. We love you and we thank you. Protect us as we travel and go our ways with the fire home safely as we left them. And all God's children said together, amen, amen, and amen. <laughs>